Have you ever been on your phone all night to compensate for a really packed day? We revealed in a recent Instagram post that it's called revenge bedtime procrastination. We delay our sleep because we lack free time during the day and want to compensate for that. Many people reached out to us afterwards asking about the psychology behind it and what to do about it. So here is all you need to know about revenge bedtime procrastination and how to overcome it. I guess I don't have to tell you how important sleep is. There's really an endless number of studies showing that sleep deprivation is related to focus and memory problems, but also health problems such as obesity, hypertension, and even cardiovascular disease. The thing is, in many cases, no external factors such as sleeping disorders are responsible for our lack of sleep. It's rather us neglecting to go to bed. <laughs> And it all started when a group of Dutch researchers introduced this topic in 2014 to the scientific realm. They argued that, especially at night, people tend to have little mental energy or self-control capacity left. So when we have to decide whether to go to sleep at a reasonable time or give in to our impulse of entertaining ourselves on social media, for example, because maybe we're brooding over something that has happened that day and we want to distract ourselves or um, we just didn't have enough leisure time, we're often too resource depleted to resist this temptation. In fact, bedtime procrastinators have been found to use their phone 451% more compared to non-time procrastinators three hours before bedtime. So this is around 80 minutes. Imagine 80 minutes longer than the average. And this delay can totally mess up our circadian rhythm. So in this case, our sleep wake cycle and disrupt our deep sleep, which is crucial to conserve and replenish energy reserves to restore ourselves and also for neural um, reorganization. And as I mentioned, sleep disruptions also make us less productive on the next day. So how come knowing about all this isn't enough for us to quit bedtime procrastination. Well, this line of research is still very young, but some researchers have already identified a few reasons for bedtime procrastination. Some observed a bedtime routine aversion among bedtime procrastinators, so they simply dislike preparing for bed, flossing their teeth, changing their clothes, and so on. Maybe because it's finally the time of the day to enjoy some me time. And you may know that from yourself when sitting on the couch, there is sometimes this end of the day inertia where getting up simply seems an unsurmountable challenge. So that's one reason. Another one is self-regulation failure, especially when it comes to media consumption at night. We might intend to go to bed early, but the urge to entertain or distract ourselves is just too strong. For some, taking up their phone when going to bed has even become automated. And then finally, negative thoughts and rumination can make us delay our sleep as well. When millions of thoughts are running through our mind, distracting ourselves with our phone seems like an easy fix, at least in the short term. All right, so what can we do about it? How can we learn to regulate ourselves and to overcome revenge bedtime procrastination? Here are three ways to reduce revenge bedtime procrastination you may not have on your radar yet. The first thing you can try is to use your phone mindfully. Mindfulness exercises can help to improve your impulse control and to be more aware of your phone usage, but it goes even further. A very recent study from 2021 found that mindfully engaging in cyber leisure, how they call it, so basically being on digital devices for leisure rather than work purposes, can actually have positive effects. People are still able to put their phone away when intending to go to bed, thereby lowering the risk for bedtime procrastination. But on top of that, they are also more able to use their time on the phone effectively to mentally detach from work. So they are actually able to recover more, but only when being mindful about their phone usage. 
These findings have been shown to increase both vitality on the next day as well as performance. The researchers from this paper that I just talked about suggest a short mindfulness breathing exercise before being on the phone in the evening. So if you like, integrate that into your post-work routine, for example, with flow sessions such as Calm Winds or Grounded. Another powerful strategy to overcome revenge bedtime procrastination is a combination of something called mental contrasting and implementation intentions. Let me quickly explain what that means. In mental contrasting, you first visualize the best possible outcome in as much detail as possible. In this case, with sufficient sleep, you may also feel well rested or in a better mood, perhaps more productive and so on. Afterwards, you vividly imagine whatever is holding you back, so your inner obstacles, for example, the urge to scroll through Instagram when difficult thoughts come up, the impulse to watch videos, and so on. Becoming aware of this discrepancy is crucial. Only imagining the best outcome or reflecting on the obstacle first has been shown to weaken goal pursuit. So if you try this out, make sure to first visualize the best outcome and afterwards the obstacles. This strategy should then be combined with implementation intentions. These if-then plans define which behavior shall be performed when and how and help to automate productive behaviors. You may formulate intentions such as if it is, say, 10 p.m., then I will stop whatever I'm doing and go to bed. Or if it is 10 p.m., then I will switch my phone to flight mode and put it in a different room. This combination of mental contrasting and implementation intentions is a catch-all strategy. Um, so according to the researchers who tested it to beat revenge bedtime procrastination, you combine all the tools you need to ensure goal commitment, striving and implementation. So make sure to give this one a try. Okay, the last tip is something that I think is very important as well and kind of overlooked because so far the scientific literature in this area has only focused on bedtime procrastination, leaving out the aspect of revenge. This latter aspect emphasizes something else though. It points to the fact that it might not only be a, a matter of self-regulation failure, but also of intentionally procrastinating on sleep in this case, for example, due to dissatisfaction with how one is spending one's daytime. So if there are any psychological researchers watching, this is your invitation to get started and test interventions specifically tailored to revenge bedtime procrastination. In the meantime, we can do our best to make our daily lives more meaningful so we don't feel the urge to procrastinate on sleep in the first place. If you like, take out your journal and reflect on what a perfect typical day would look like. I mentioned typical here because a typical day may of course be different from a lazy day in bed, for example, that we may crave every now and then or perhaps the perfect birthday party or your wedding day. And then afterwards reflect on what it is that makes that typical day perfect. How do you spend your time in this imagination? What gives you a sense of purpose? Which values do you want to live your life by? This reflection might give you a handle on what you can adapt in your current everyday life to make it more enjoyable and meaningful. Perhaps you'll also discover daytime activities that you can avoid because they steal your time without adding much value. So for me, for example, it's unnecessarily often checking my emails. And once you've identified these rather meaningless activities, it gets easier to build new habits and use your time more efficiently. And I know these are all very big questions that I mentioned here and um, they might take some time. So if you'd like some guidance during the process, check out the flow sessions Rocking Chair, Legacy or Jar of Life, all in the area of drive, to reflect on the things that give you a sense of purpose. 
Okay, I hope you find these tips helpful and already start tonight to beat revenge bedtime procrastination. If you like this video and would like to see more of this kind of content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to all the Flow Lab channels. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. <music>